Did you ever dream of being an explorer? Maybe you thought you had to go to outer space. But we know more about the surface of the moon than our very own ocean. And we only know about a fraction of the species believed to exist on Earth. Fish-wise, Rajampat alone has now 1,617 species that we've recorded so far. But there's new ones being found every year, and we're thinking we'll probably reach 2,000 at some point. That's more than the entire Great Barrier Reef. But... When we find a new form of life, we describe it. That's the formal process used to identify and record a new species. There's so many special habitats like this, which are isolated, where evolution has been proceeding at its own pace, that we have an enormous number of endemic species here, of species that are only found here in Raja Ampat. So if you look underneath there, you'll see there's all these different clams, lots of sponges as well. And we think that that's just because you get all these very enclosed habitats, and it's just a, a very, very special place that way. Part of our mission here in Raja Ampat is to search for a new species. So we've sailed around to the northwest base of the island of Waigio. As far as we know, there has been no scientific exploration here, ever. This is a bay that we have never explored. It's just been a little bit off the beaten track and not easy to get to. It's totally mangrove lined, but it goes deep. It's at least 60 meters back in here, so it could be very exciting. The first step is to choose a specific location one of those special places that just might be home to a special kind of inhabitant. Mark uses a drone, just like the one we use for filming, to scout the area and narrow down the options. See how it's all kind of like bumpy here? That's all fossil reef, it's been mm -hmm. uplifted. Here, the reef extends right up to the roots of the forest. We're really deep in this bay. We still have, and we're lots of mangroves around, but we still have very clear water and, you know, these, these steep drop-offs mm -hmm. with caves. I'm excited to poke my head in and really see what's in those caves. We'll take a sneak peek and search for clues before investigating further. Diving in, the hundreds of them on yeah. the bottom. That's a dark fish in the genus Terleotris, but it looks a little bit off to me. So I think um, we might have to come back and do a dive. Well, that dark fish looks special to me. Um, I'm yeah. hesitant to say 100% that it's new, but it's a it's an interesting fish that doesn't doesn't immediately ring bells to me. What makes it special? Simply the fact that they were in such large numbers mm -hmm. and then diving in the way that they were, that's something which I'm not used to seeing at all, actually. To know for sure, we'll need to get a closer look. And this close to the mangroves, it also means we'll need some extra eyes to keep a close watch on us. The reason why we can potentially find new species here is because this is the type of habitat that nobody samples. It's a habitat which, quite frankly, could and does have crocodiles. We'll take our chances, I guess. We do have to be aware. I definitely didn't want to jump in if you guys weren't here because <laughs> it looks very eerie. These are syringes full of clove oil, uh, clove oil solution. It works on our teeth for toothaches, but it also works to put fish to sleep. If it looks like this might indeed be a new species, we'll need to collect some samples. Unfortunately, that means we have to catch some fish. But we're going to do it as gently as possible. Got it like this. Let's say that there's a fish that's in a coral head mm -hmm. and shoot it full. The minute they take their first breath, they go. <laughs> and then, and then, then, then you know you've got them. So then you have to kind of keep them there and within 30 seconds, they're like. <laughs> Before we knock them out, we'll need to go through the first steps of describing. 
which starts with getting some good photos of this unfamiliar fish in its natural habitat. Now, the real challenge begins, putting some fish to sleep. Definitely harder than I thought. Very exciting. I mean, we've got six fish, um, including a couple juveniles and a couple full adults. What are the chances of um, it being a new species? This guy's got this black spot in the tail, and then the red spot on the gills and the blue eyes. It, it doesn't look anything like the thing that I'm used to calling Percipteris. We'll have to do some genetics to prove that, but uh, no, it looks, looks very promising. The best way to confirm absolutely whether we have a new species is by genetic analysis. It's kind of like getting the fish's fingerprints. That will happen at a lab back on shore, but it depends on us carefully preserving the samples. For the genetic sample, we're going to take a fin clip. This one looks like a good one to do a fin. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to go, that's the pelvic fence right there. There you go. That. So we're just going to put that into the alcohol. Off it goes. We also need to preserve samples that will go to a museum to be stored for further study. When you're describing a new species, you actually have to do counts of all the different fin rays, scales, a whole number of things. Okay. Oh, it starts yeah, here. Know. Yep, there you go. Good job, that's a perfect one. Excellent. You get an A plus in pinning. <laughs> if it is a new species, what's the next step into announcing a species, naming it, and for example? So we have to make a formal description, and then you have to pick a name for it as well. How do you decide how to name it? Well, is that by gut feeling or is it something? I have a very cool young presenter coming along with me. I'd probably think about naming it after her. But um, in general, you know, it's something which you really think about. So there are still a number of steps before I might get a fish named after me. But if we're right, we'll be adding to the number of species that inhabit our planet. And it's a number that will continue to grow. When I was a kid and I was reading about all of the 1800s natural historians and explorers, I thought, oh geez, you know, I was born in the wrong, the wrong century. But then I got here and I realized that actually there's still an enormous amount of this planet that we don't know much about. And the biodiversity here is still largely unexplored. That's sort of like every marine biologist or even every kid's dream to come across a new species. It's saying a lot that there's so many places that has a potential for new species and new exploring. It's, it's an exciting thing to be part of. <laughs>